Hello, I'm Jennifer Deger. I'm one of the curators of Feral Atlas, the more than human Anthropocene. Feral Atlas is a transdisciplinary exploration of Anthropocene worlds. It's a work of online scholarship that seeks to be at once playful and political while remaining insistently attuned to more than human histories. Our aim in making Feral Atlas has been to create a site that does something more than simply catalogue imperial and industrial ruin. Drawing together a team of more than 100 scientists, coders, artists, humanists, activists and designers, we've assembled a maze of text, image, animation and interactivity to refract new ways of seeing the Anthropocene. In doing so, our aim is to reveal the non-designed effects of infrastructures and to show how these are giving rise to our current Earth crisis. You'll find a full list of project participants here on the cover page. So now, let's dive in. Here we are on the landing page, where you can see an assortment of what we call feral entities floating across the screen, ready to lead you through the atlas. If you hover over one of them, you'll learn the name of the entity, and you'll also see one of four words highlighted beneath it. In this case, water hyacinth, the word is empire. If I choose another one, let's say this snail, the name rosy wolf snail appears along with the word invasion. Looking closely, you can see four categories, invasion, empire, capital, and acceleration. Each of the feral entities is tied to one of the categories on this landing page. So as a visitor to the site, you might take a little while to let these critters wander around your screen. And as you do so, you might notice that at the bottom of the screen, there's an invitation to open the drawer. If you do that, you can access a range of introductory essays that will help to orientate you to the site and the underlying ideas that have shaped both the form and the content of Feral Atlas. Some people might find their comfort zone here in the drawer, clicking and reading through the text-based arguments and explanations. But I want to stress that we designed the site with a commitment to exploring how a digital platform might enable a different kind of scholarly work. Our hope is that people will spend time with the clickable elements and be prepared to be a little bit disorientated, especially at first as they move through the site figuring out the underlying structure and the underlying intellectual arguments as they go, knowing that they can return to the drawer and read the text and spend time reflecting in that mode whenever they feel like it. But we hope that you allow your curiosity to chart your own unique path through the atlas. Let's jump in further by clicking one of the entities, in this case, coffee rust fungus. And kaboom, the smoke clears and you find yourself in an illustrated landscape. In this case, it's the landscape of capital. If you peek inside the drawer, you'll find a series of essays that can further orientate you to what's going on here and explain, for instance, why we just saw an explosion. But for now, let's go back to the landscape itself. If you look on the right of the drawer, you'll see that this landscape is what we're calling an Anthropocene detonator. There are four in total, and the others are, as hinted on the landing page, invasion, empire, and acceleration. Let's have a look at the image in front of us. You'll note that there's a red dot on the upper left of the screen. If you hover over the dot, you'll see that that's where the coffee rust fungus sits in this landscape, quietly waiting to continue leading you through the atlas. You can see that there are other small dots as well, little black ones. If we hover over these, they'll also tell you what feral entity is sitting in the landscape. Here we have wildfires intensified by fossil fuel economies. Over here we have heavy metals plus aerosol dust from industrial mining and burning. Down here, introduced kudzu on exhausted plantation land. And here we have bull weevil in cotton plantation. We've named the feral entities again for you, but we've extended those names to try and show you the relationship between the entity and the infrastructure that allows it to proliferate. If you zoom out, you'll begin to see the edges of the capital landscape. 
Each landscape is a different shape in order to present different conceptual arguments about that Anthropocene detonator. And, again, you can read more about that in the draw. For now, you can explore the capital landscape in all its toxic glory. So this landscape is really intended for you to explore for as long and as much as you want. When you're done exploring, and probably at a certain time you'll just feel like clicking again, you can click on any of the dots. But let's go back to the coffee rust fungus to keep following that particular entity on its journey through the atlas. Once you click on the red dot, you'll be taken to what we call the tipper page. And here we elaborate on our argument for all the ways in which everyday infrastructural processes allow certain non-human entities to proliferate. So by following the coffee rust fungus, we've gone to the capital landscape and now we're on to the tipper page, which in this case is grid. There's a small text here that explains the notion of grid as we're using it in Feral Atlas followed by a series of video poems that allow you to see the notion of grid and to sit with it for a while. Let's hit play for a second. Stopping that for now, as you scroll down you'll see there's actually a range of videos that you can look at and spend time with. These video poems are meant to be more than illustrative. They're intended to gesture at precisely the kind of land and seascape transformations that infrastructures produce. There's a short text poem here as well to draw you into the reflective, connective space that we've tried to cultivate here in Feral Atlas. And then at the bottom, you'll see a chance to go sideways in the Atlas by following different feral entities that are also connected to this tipper. Of course, if you want to know more about tippers and what we mean by tippers when we describe them as modes of infrastructure mediated state change, then simply open the drawer. There you'll find a short introduction, a much longer essay, and you can link to the essays that show other tippers. There are seven tippers in total. The draw will stay with you throughout your journey into the atlas and you can move in and out of it whenever you want without losing your place in the journey. If we close the draw here now, we return to the grid page. So the tipper page has been designed so that you can spend time thinking about this concept of tippers. In this case, so what's grid? What does it mean? What does it mean in the context of Feral Atlas? And then when you're ready, there's a little flashing red light at the top of your screen inviting you to continue on and then you'll finally land at the field report. And here we are. Coffee Rust Fungus Field Report by Yvette Perfecto. This is just one of the 79 field reports that that sit at the heart of Feral Atlas. Each of these reports offers an empirical and situated account of feral ecologies in the making. As you scroll down the page, the soft shadow curtain and the header text moves away to reveal what we call a flow map. In the context of each field report, the flow map charts feral flows and blockages at various scales and in a wide range of visual genres. This particular flow map shows a screenshot from a site that maps global wind streams. So here we see streamlines over the Atlantic Ocean, and they illustrate a key point made in the field report, namely that scientists speculate that coffee rust spores were once carried to the Americas by the winds from plantations in the Ivory Coast or Angola. Scroll down and you're in the full text of the report, and here you can spend time reading, and as you do, you'll notice that there's a little invitation to curiosity sitting in the margins, just marked up as feral quality. And so, of course, that we're hoping that at a certain point people will become curious and will click that feral quality. And here we go. 
uncontainable. Green is the colour indicating uncontainable, which is one of the feral qualities within the atlas. The text relating to feral quality will turn green to make clear the relationship between this particular feral quality and the moment it reveals itself at work in the field report. So feral qualities, along with Anthropocene detonators like capital and tippers like grid, form the three vectors of analysis within feral atlas. Again, to learn more about what we really mean by feral qualities, just jump into the drawer and have a look around. Or indeed, you can click within the feral quality annotation itself and you'll find yourself at the associated essay, which in this instance is a poem. Feral Atlas is an experiment in form where poems, essays, videos, paintings, images and sound recordings all contribute to understanding Anthropocene worlds. Many voices and many perspectives make up the Atlas. And as such, there are a number of ways you can move through and a number of ways to build connections. Our hope is that your unique curiosity will lead you to understand this work in a way that no one else can. For example, this poem by Ruth Padell is offered up as both text and a sound file. Time to fly. You go because you heard a cuckoo call. You go because you've met someone. You made a vow. There are no more grasshoppers. You go because the cold is coming. Spring is coming. I'm sorry to cut Ruth short there, but this could actually be a 10-hour video if we didn't jump around and take a few abrupt shortcuts. So here again is the chance to explore other feral entities that are associated with this feral quality. We can see coffee rust fungus is there, but there's also salmon pests and pathogens, kudzu, comb jellies. But let's go back to the field report itself and presume that you've clicked through, read the feral qualities, engaged in the images, the diagrams, the audiovisual media, and actually stayed and made it all the way to the end. And you end up on this panel here, which appears at the end of every field report, announcing that this is only one of the many reports within Feral Atlas. And then you're invited to revert at your own risk, or if you see this tiny writing here, you can choose to explore the super index. So let's see what this means. If we click on the revert at your own risk button here, we're back on the landing page again, ready to begin another journey through Feral Atlas. Now let's hover over one of the feral entities floating across your screen to pick an entity from a different Anthropocene detonator or landscape. Okay, let's go to antibiotics and acceleration. So here, as we know, the red dot shows us where the feral entity belongs within the landscape of acceleration. Nearby, there are other feral entities to discover. Here's a wide view of the landscape itself, and there are plenty of other places to go to explore and discover other feral entities and their unique relationship within this landscape of acceleration. Of course, we don't necessarily have to follow the red dot, so let's pick something else to follow here within acceleration. We could go here to this well-hidden little dot which will take us to discarded plastics in oceans. We journey to the tipper page and this time landing up a dump. Again, a series of video poems made specifically for Feral Atlas by a number of contributing video artists invite us to reflect on the notion of dump as a way of understanding what infrastructures do and how infrastructural processes give rise to non-designed effects. We scroll past another text poem and at the end of the page we encounter the feral entities associated with this particular tipper and inviting us to explore sideways and maybe that's what we should do this time. So what if we go to salmon pests and pathogens? Now we're in the invasion landscape. Our red dot this time will take us to a field report on the ways in which industrial salmon produces forms of pest waste and disease. 
I won't explore this whole landscape now, but again the invitation is to look around. If you go into the drawer, you'll find an essay by Fei-Fei Zhou, who was both the artist of this landscape and a co-curator of Feral Atlas. And in the essay, she explains her process and explains some of the things behind the structure and the aesthetics of each of these landscapes. As we've mentioned, they each have their own shape and orientation. And I should mention here too that in the invasion landscape, Feifei collaborated with two First Nations artists, Nancy McDinney from Australia and Andy Everson from British Columbia and Canada. So again, we return to our feral entity and when we click, we'll go through to the tipper page, this time for crowd. And again, the same elements create a space for reflection and meditation. Let's click through to the field report. This one is by Ernest Alfred and it describes the impact of commercial salmon farming on his ancestral lands. The flow map for this field report is a video by his friend Tavish Campbell showing the waste coming out of commercial salmon processing plants and being fed straight into the waters of British Columbia. So we'll pause that here and continue scrolling down through the field report. As the field reports and the other elements that make up the atlas will be available to read in the archive or to look at, I won't go into detail here. But I want to point out that here's another opportunity for sideways movement. Here's another field report about salmon pests and pathogens, this one by an anthropologist, Heather Swanson. If we click here, we're met by a header text that lifts away to reveal a flow map artwork by Victoria Baskin Coffey, our Feral Atlas visual editor. Heather Swanson's report explores the ways in which salmon lights proliferate within salmon farms and quite literally slip through the nets out into the wild populations around the Atlantic. And here again, you'll find feral qualities on the left of the screen and a variety of maps that extend the field report and then we'll arrive at the bottom of the field report. But this time, instead of going revert at your own risk, let's choose the super index. The super index is a kind of bird's eye view of the atlas. In the middle of the index, you'll see each of the feral entities. And as you hover nearby, you'll see the author's name for that field report appearing. Click on the name and you'll return straight through to the field report associated with that feral entity. You'll also notice on the left hand side we have a list of all the tippers. At the top there are the four Anthropocene detonators and on the right hand side is a list of all the colour coded feral qualities. So each time you hover over an element within the super index you'll see the ways in which we've organised them conceptually within the atlas. Here we have rabbits, and as I hover over, you can see they're associated with the take tipper and the invasion Anthropocene detonator, along with the feral qualities of partners, superpowers, and creatures of conquest. But of course, you don't need to begin with the feral entity. If I hover over the categories at the edges, they reveal different constellations of relationship. For example, if I hover over the Anthropocene detonators, They'll show the feral entities associated with them in each of the landscapes. Then you might notice floating in the back, blurring in and out of focus, odd words and hard to make out categories. This one says pathogenic E. coli. The idea behind this floating soup, as we call it, is to show the way that some of the categories we've used in the super index are not written in stone. There were certainly so many other feral entities that we could have included in the atlas, but also different tippers and potentially different Anthropocene detonators too. The floatiness of the soup of alternative categories is a way of illustrating something of the audacity of the way we've framed this, while allowing people to navigate and kind of get a bigger picture of the argument we've presented. And to suggest that the work of categorising is itself performative and provisional. 
Scroll down and you'll find yourself in the reading room, which is a collection of all the essays that you would otherwise find in the drawer at different times throughout your journey through the Atlas, as well as other essays written by team members and commissioned pieces from experts in their fields. You'll also find here a teaching guide. You know, we made this atlas with the idea that it would be a resource not just for scholars working in different disciplines, but also for the general public, for people with a serious interest in the state of the planet. We have a hope that even high school students who are curious might seek out aspects of feral atlas and in doing so find their way to new understandings of the worlds around them. Then scrolling down from the reading room, you'll find an organised array of the feral entities. The ones that you've already visited, the field reports that you've already read, will appear in colour. And so here you get a different sense of the scope of Feral Atlas. And at the same time, you're offered, in fact, another way to return to those field reports. At the top of the page, to the left of the screen, remains the revert at your own risk button, which always returns us to the landing page where we can encounter many more ways through the atlas. Here on the landing page, you'll now notice our floating feral atlas key, which I hadn't wanted to point out until now, because as I've said, our hope has always been that people will sit with their initial disorientation and find their own way through the atlas. But it's important to know that this floating key will be with you throughout your journey in the Atlas. And if you click it, it will return you to the super index. So this is a very quick tour through Feral Atlas and some of the intricacies that we've pulled together with our large, generous and talented team. When we made the project, we knew it would probably only last for five years in its clickable life. What's left now is the archive, and I hope that this quick tour through provides some kind of indication of what the site was. Of course, you can still visit all the elements, see the videos, read the field reports, and use your own imagination to piece together the ways in which the atlas was designed to work. <laughs>